and now what is the ro role of these clotting factors in the mechanism of secondary hemostasis is same tissue damage so once when you encounter a tissue damage this secondary hemostasis is of two types one is extrinsic pathway and intrinsic pathway of coagulation so extrinsic pathway first when you encounter a tissue damage once when you encounter a tissue damage the damaged tissue will release the tissue factor okay so this tissue factor will first go and activate the factor 7 that is pro convertin so this tissue factor will make it into the activated form and then this activated factor 7 along with the tissue damage with the help of calcium it will form factor 10 into its activated form remember in all the steps mostly calcium is required for activation as a catalyst so it means that when the person is calcium deficient so that will also be one of the cause for improper clotting the person will encounter increased blood loss when they are facing any trauma or damage okay it doesn't mean that only with the clotting mechanisms or the clotting factors even the calcium which is a mineral if it is deficient then also they will encounter such kind of blood loss bleeding so this is the extrinsic factor extrinsic pathway is very very short okay the damaged tissue activate pro convertin into its activated form and this activated factor 7 along with the tissue factor and the calcium it will enter into the common final pathway for making the factor 10 to become factor 10a if you go to the intrinsic mechanism once when the tissue is damaged the collagen which is present in the extracellular matrix is exposed okay so that will be recognized by the Hajman factor and then it becomes into its activated form. This activated factor 12A will further activate plasma thromoplastin antecedent that is factor 11 into its activated form. This will activate the factor 9 Christmas factor into its activated form. Along with this, the factor 8 also will come and join then activated factor 9 calcium all together will again enter into the common pathway okay so once when both extrinsic and intrinsic mechanisms enter into the common pathway now there takes place the role of the common pathway that is activation of prothrombin activator so this prothrombin activator is getting activated by the activated factor 10 with factor 5 that is pro accelerin factor 5 is also released during the primary platelet plug formation okay so this activated prothrombin will make the prothrombin into thrombin okay so this thrombin will further go and it, it itself is an auto stimulant so this will further go and stimulate the activation of factor 5 and what is this thrombin is going to do now is this thrombin will convert fibrinogen into fibrin okay so this fibrin now it is a single thread of fibrin and the multiple fibrin threads will be formed and it will form a network okay that is mediated by the fibrin stabilizing factor so once when the fibrin is formed it is a single unit and that will make multiple fibrin to come and join and form a network so that will form a stable fibrin clot okay and after some period of time once when the damaged tissue is repaired and the tissue damage is completely now 
repaired. The wound is healed. Then this fibrin clot will be degraded. That is called as fibrinolysis. Okay. If not, for example, this is the lumen of the blood vessel. And this is the part where you have the damaged tissue. Okay. And now the fibrin clot is formed over here to control the bleeding. After the wound healing mechanism, still the fibrin clot is present in these regions. Then what it will do is, it will disturb the blood flow. Okay, so what will happen is, this will undergo lysis. That is called as fibrinolytic mechanism. Okay, so once when the fibrin clot is being lysed, then the blood flow will become normal. Okay, clear. So this is thrombus. If this fibrin clot is not lysed after the recovery of the tissue, still if it is present, there is chances for the fibrin clot to break down and then from the thrombus, it will form the emboli and that may go and cause blockage in any minor arteries. Okay. So that is the importance why this fibrinolytic mechanism is involved. Okay, clear with this?